All this is being marked 10 years since the creation of the Department of Homeland Security. Michael Chertoff, former Department of Homeland Security Secretary, one of three, uh, joins us now. Secretary Chertoff, nice to have you back on the program. Good morning. Just initially, what's your sense of how sequester is affecting our national security? Well, as everybody knows, the problem with sequester is not so much the amount of money that's being cut as it is the way in which it's cut. It's kind of uh, evenly across the board without regard to priorities about what's more important and what's less important. With some flexibility, I think some of the damage here would be mitigated. But the way it's playing out now, you have to cut equally from programs you can frankly afford to do some cutting from and also from those that are very important to our national security. And that's one of the reasons that Secretary Napolitano said there were some of these illegal immigrants being being released because it had to do with where the money was being cut. You were secretary of the Department of Homeland Security when the Bush administration's controversial catch and release program was happening and you ended that program. Is what we're seeing today catch and release all over again and what do you think about it? Well, I don't think it's catch and release because I don't think it's the policy of the department now deliberately to release people. I think what they're trying to do is manage a couple of things. One is the impact not just of sequester but of a continuing resolution that hasn't been passed yet. And then the other is trying to just consider in general as you balance your resources how to focus on keeping the most significant threats in detention. But there's no doubt that having uh, some kind of a legislative fix that would give the secretary the ability to move money from one account to another would give her a better tool to use in managing this risk. So why do you think it's a, it's a money issue rather than a policy this administration? I, mean, I have to say the consistency we've seen since uh, my time in office and going through the current secretary's tenure has been to actually increase and step, step up border enforcement. Uh, there's been a steady increase in resources at the border and technology at the border. Uh, there's been a decrease in the net inflow of people illegally crossing. Uh, there has been some, some pretty tough detention across the board over the last seven or eight years. So I'm not seeing in this some deliberate decision to decide you're going to reverse uh, the, cur the current detention policy. I think it's rather a budget issue which has to be tackled hmm. sooner rather than later. And your, your opinion is valuable on this because you've lived through this. You understand the constraints of budgets. I was listening to your conversation this morning at the Politico event and it, it was interesting to hear some of the issues that uh, you all face when it came to the limitations of Congress. Having no broad immigration policy, having no budget, for example. And these are no doubt big things that the American people understand. You know, not having a budget is a big deal. But what are we supposed to do in the absence of those big policies that are not getting through Congress? What are we supposed to think? Well, I mean, I think people are, are rightly disappointed <clears throat> about the inability of our political leaders on, on both sides of the aisle to be able to move uh, pieces of legislation that I frankly think have pretty broad bipartisan support. And a lot of it gets tangled up in some of the arcane elements of the legislative process. Without that, what happens is you're nibbling around the edges. You have the executive branch trying to manage uh, with resources that are, are not just diminished, but, but uncertain. And without a budget, you can't do the kind of planning in terms of acquisition and deployment of people that you want to do in order to manage your money wisely. Just real quick here, 10 years anniversary of the Department of Homeland Security. Now you're working in the private sector as well. In, in your opinion, with the new technology that we have, is the Department of Homeland Security effectively and efficiently matching the threats that we face today? Or has it grown bigger and less efficient over the years and might be part of the problem in the, in the financial situation that we're in as a country? You know, I think the department has matured and has done a, an effective job of keeping us safe. And the proof of the pudding is we've not had a serious terrorist attack in this country since 9-11. The one exception, obviously, is Major Nadal Hassan at Fort Hood. Uh, so that's a, a very positive measure of success. The technology is changing. One of the areas I think we all acknowledged uh, this morning, all three secretaries, that we need to do more work in is streamlining acquisition, making it easier and quicker to uh, get technology in place. But look, the bottom line is it's hard to prove the value of what doesn't happen, but I guarantee you when something bad does happen, everybody feels it right away and they understand the importance of preventing it. Everyone was talking about leaving their shoes on to get on the plane, right? Secretary Chertoff, we talk about all these big issues. Everybody wants to know, can I leave my belt on? What about my shoes when I got on the plane? So we'll see if technology plays
are all there. We hope, hope that it does, and in the meantime, everybody's working on it. That's right. Secretary Chertoff, nice to have you today. Thank you so much. Thank you.